loves, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Rai, and this is Rai's Reading Corner, and today I am bringing you my top books of 2020. Oh, you feel so special, pretty from the minute that I met you. So 2020 was an interesting year to say the least, but I read the most amount of books I have ever read in a single year. I read a total of 103 books, which I'm super, super proud of myself for doing, um, Which, but it made it really hard to pick my top books because I did read a lot of great books this year. So what I did was I kind of looked at all the five star books that I read over the year and I kind of narrowed them down to their top 10. However, I did end up doing a top 11 because I just couldn't like not pick a couple books and I just ended up including all of them. Um, but some one of the books or two of the books are by the same author and from the same like kind of like series. So maybe I can kind of like clump them in together. So. All right, so the um, these are just my opinions. Obviously, um, everyone's opinions are different. So just because I really like this book doesn't mean that, you know, I'm not saying you're gonna, you know, you'll absolutely love them, but I definitely think that they're worth a read because there's something in it that obviously really stuck out to me as being one of the best 11 books that I read for the entire year. Um, trying to put them in order was super hard as well. <laughs> um, definitely the top like I would say five are really solidified, but the ones before that could probably be interchangeable. But I'll start at my at book number 11 and work my way down to book number one. Okay, so book number 11 was actually really surprising for me. It was a late read in the year. I just read it this past month. I read it for a readathon. It was recommended to me by my girl Kirsten from Kirsten's Corner. And this was Faking Under the Mistletoe by Ashley Shepard. This was a five-star read for me. Um, it is a romance story that takes place around the holidays. But definitely it could be read um, outside of the holiday time frame. Um, our main girl, Libby, is working at a company. She's an intern and she's super into Christmas. And then there is her boss who is not like kind of like a Scrooge, like a Grinch. Um, and he recently has broken up with his longtime girlfriend. Um, they're at an event to celebrate the holidays and they see the ex-girlfriend there and Libby just reacts and ends up kissing him. And again, like it's kind of like her boss, um, but they end up being falling for each other. But what I like about this and what I've found this year when it comes to romances, I like things that have more serious topics discussed in the romance instead of just a fluff piece. Um, this talks about um, definitely like a sexual assault type situations. Um, and I thought it was covered really well. Um, and it's definitely intermingled throughout the entire story. Um, I also love when characters banter back and forth and you'll see that in a couple other books that I have here, what makes them again, romances that I love and the banter between our two main characters, Libby and Asher is fantastic. And I read this super quickly and I would highly, highly recommend this book to people that like romance and just people that just want to try some, a different genre, but definitely was one of my favorite books that I read this year. All right, book number 10 it is a YA book for me, and this is Stay Gold by Toby McSmith. This book, I loved it. I read it so quickly. It made me cry. It made me happy. It evoked all the emotions that I could possibly ask for in a contemporary story, and to me, that's like golden. Also, I love the reference to Stay Gold to Ponyboy from um, The Outsider, which is one of my all-time favorite books. So to me, the title off the bat already made it in for me. Our main character is Pony, and he wants to fly under the radar at his senior year. He's going to a new school. He's tired of a lot of getting attention because he is transgender, um, but he is very nervous trying to go to a new school and try to see, you know, he, like you said, he doesn't want people to know. He just wants to be seen as this guy named Pony. Then we also have this girl named Georgia, and then who was kind of in this track of always wanting to be this cheerleader, but she's starting to think that there's more to life than what she has done throughout her high school career. And she ends up falling for our main character, Pony, and they have a friendship. Things happen between the two of them and in the school. It just is a great read. It's a lot of rep in here. Like I said, it made me cry. It made me smile. It just was a great book. And I feel like a lot of people haven't really been talking much about it. Um, and I think more needs to be talked about this book because I think it is a great, it was a really fun read for me. And it was a good YA contemporary novel. All right, book number nine, Loveless by Alice Oseman. I just started reading her this year. I read all the Heartstopper series up till what's released, and then I read Loveless, and I will be continuing with her backlist of books 
um, in 2021. I super, again, love this book. I read it really, really quickly for as long as it, the book of it is. It's over 400 pages. I read it for a readathon. Again, great rep in this book. Our main character, Georgia, has never been in love, has never been kissed, and she definitely feels like an outsider among her group of friends at school. Um, in the fall, she is starting university, and her goal there is to just find love and to be like everyone else that she sees, you know, growing up around her that goes she went to school with. Um, but some things kind of happen and it kind of sometimes wrecks havoc with her friends. But she's kind of um, seeing romance as a new way and what love means in different ways, not just in a like attraction way. And she's introduced the words asexual, um, aromantic. And it's just, I love this because I think it brings about love and what love means and a different meaning. And I think that needs to be discussed more in books, especially for um, young readers to read that, you know, love doesn't just mean that you fall in love with somebody and you're supposed to be with them for the rest of your life. Like there's different meanings and different types of love that you can have towards people. And I think it's a great book of discovering oneself and one's self identity. I loved all the rep and the diversity in this book. It was just a great read and I really liked it. And I'm really excited to read more of Alice Osman in 2021. It's probably not surprising if you've been around my channel for a while, I talk about these two books quite a bit in a lot of my videos, but it is Take a Hint of Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is, I love Talia Hibbert, and this again reiterates my love of romance where we have this great connection and rants and raves between two characters, and I love, just love everything about it. So our main character, Danny, she is a professor, um, at a local school and she has friends with the security guard and she didn't check her email one day and there is a false fire alarm and like a practice but she gets stuck in the elevator and the security guard is seen carrying her out and then um, in social media it's like a wildfire that they're dating. So they end up doing fake dating um, to romance because it helps his um, organization that he has for like underprivileged youth that play rugby. It's a great story. The guy in here, Zaf, is just, oh, he's everything. He is wants just what's best for Danny and he is not afraid of a strong, independent woman, which I love in a book. And it's just, again, cute story. It is some steamy smut in there, which I love. And I've really, really have enjoyed Talia Hibbert's, Hibbert's reading. I cannot wait for the third book um, about the last sister, Eve Brown, that will come out this beginning of this year. But I can only imagine how good it's going to be. So this leads perfect segue into my next book, which just made it one spot down, and this is Get a Life, Chloe Brown, again, by Talia Hibbert. This follows the story of Chloe Brown, who is the oldest sister. Um, she is chronically ill, um, and she's trying to really put her life on halt and has limited what she kind of does until she experiences a near-death experience and she decides that she wants to really just kind of take advantage and live her life. So she writes a list of all these different kind of things that she would never normally do. In the meantime, she meets Redford or Red and he is just, I love the relationship between the two of them and just the love that he has for her and the understanding of you know, what she's kind of going through and his patience. It's just great. I love the rep of a chronic illness. My sister has a chronic illness. So it was really great to see how this impacts her and her family because I can relate with, you know, how having a family member has a chronic illness and how that plays a role in your family. I loved the body positivity in this book. And it was just, again, great romance, smut, the bicker or the banter between Radford and Chloe is just phenomenal. And I've really decided that this past 2021, I've really kind of to like romance. And this wasn't something that I read a lot. I did read when I was like maybe in high school and like early college, I read a lot of Nicholas Spark, but I've really now have fallen in love with this different romance genre. And I'm hoping to continue that in 2021. All right, my number six book of 2020 was Cliff and You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Um, I read Elizabeth Acevedo for the first time this past year and Oh, I love her writing. It is so poetic. It is so beautiful. I feel like everyone knows what this story is about, but if you're unfamiliar, we have our two main characters whose father has died in a plane accident, and they did not even know that they were siblings, and then the death of their father has brought them together and realized that they have siblings on the opposite ends, really, of the world. 
and they come together to grieve the loss of their father and just the topic of grief and finding out you know you think you know someone when you really don't because they both thought that their father you know was this man who was devoted and loved their family and believe it or not he had you know he had a whole other family in a different area of the world and it's just them coming together and bonding about the loss of their father and then him having to also come with the loss of the realization that their father was not who they really thought they were but definitely a different multi-level story and the amount of impact that she can put into a free verse novel is just brilliant um it's just such a great story and she's such a great storyteller and i will have one more book to read by her and i'm hoping to get to it in 2021 all right so we are now to my top five books of 2021 and this is where i got super hard to really pin them in the order but i think i am confident with where i put them so book number five is you should see me to crown by leah johnson this book was just phenomenal in my eyes and it was a debut novel and it did not read like a debut novel for me we have our main character leah who lives with her grandparents and kind of a run down more part of town her mother had passed away but she goes to a um, high school where it is more of a wealthy area and a lot of um she is definitely the minority in there she really wants to go to this prestigious college but they just don't have the money so if she enters prom or to be prom queen it's really big in her town to get a check so that she can have money to go to this college that she really wants to it talks a lot about race um it has um, LGBTQIA plus rap. There is again a romance between our main character and another contestant that is running for prom queen. And I just think it was a phenomenal story. I don't usually tab my books. I usually just like write them down. This book had so many powerful things in here for me that I definitely tabbed them. The minor characters are great in this story. Um, yes, it is a YA. I know a lot of times people are hesitant about YA contemporary because they're like, you know, as a 20 something year old, am I able to relate to a 17, 18 year old? And that makes it difficult sometimes. But I think the issues in this book that are discussed are on a broader range than just problems that 18 year olds deal with. And so I think that's why it's definitely can be relatable to people of all different ages. But I cannot wait for her new novel that is coming out this year. I cannot wait. I'm sure it's just gonna be phenomenal if it's as good as her debut novel. I mean, you can only get better after that, so we'll see. Book number four, this one, I had trouble trying to find where I wanted to put this book because again, to me, this book was so powerful and it was The Black Flamingo by Dane um, Ada. And just besides the book being beautiful, the cover itself is just absolutely gorgeous. And then the inside is like a pink with all of these flamingos on it. So this is to talk about the story of Michael. Um, he is um, half black and half white, and he is also gay. So he is trying to navigate in this world where he does not fit in with anybody. He doesn't feel like, for one, he is gay, so he doesn't feel like he fits in with a lot of his peers. He is um, Jamaican, but he, people say he's not black enough to be Jamaican. He also is Greek Cypriot. Cy I don't know why I said that right, <laughs> but. You know he doesn't know greek and he doesn't fit into that group either so he doesn't feel like he fits in and anywhere and as a teenager like that is so difficult for anybody let alone someone that feels like they're all you know being torn in all these different groups and no one wants to accept him so it covers pretty much from his height from his little kid all the way through like college and he ends up finding drag and he finds that's where he finally fits in with his family this book, again, I tabbed it up a bunch because the things were just so powerful, the conversations that he has with people, and my heart broke with him. I celebrated, like, his happiness with him. It just evoked so many emotions, and I, again, I feel like a book that can do that, let alone do this in verse, like, again, to me, that's just amazing, and that takes such a talented writer because you can obviously evoke motion when you're writing a book that has where it's, you know, fills up the entire page. But when you have a book that on some pages, you know, you all you have is that and you still make your readers feel the emotion that the main character is, that just says how talented of an author he is. This was such an amazing read and I would definitely want to look more into other things that he has written because I just want to dive into his worlds once again. All right, we are to my top three books of 2020. 
So my next book was actually a book recommended from Michelle from Michelle Reads by A. I listened to it as an audio and it was so powerful as an audio um, that I definitely want to reread it as a book in book format um, in 2021. And this book is um, Monday's Not Coming and it's by Tiffany D. Jackson. So this is my first book by Tiffany D. Jackson and I will 100% be reading more of her books in 2021. So our main girl, Claudia, um, goes back to school after like a vacation and her best friend is not in school. Um, she's trying to, you know, asking everyone questions and asking, you know, why, where, you know, where is Monday? Asking her mom, trying to ask Monday's mom and her grandma, asking the school and people just kind of keep brushing her off like it's no big deal. They keep taking these excuses that her mom's giving her. Um, she's able to kind of connect with one teacher who also finds it odd that Monday is not in school and she, you know, does everything that she can. But the system allows her to. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes it's just not enough and your hands are tied. And I get that being as an educator, you can try so hard to, you know, something's wrong, but you can only do so much and then it gets put in someone else's hands and it's heartbreaking. This story, the twist in the story was probably the biggest twist of a story that I have read for almost probably all my books in 2021. Um, I literally was, I think I was walking while I was reading this book or listening to it. And when that twist happened, I just started to cry. Um, and it literally changes the entire book. Um, and the book becomes more of trying to figure out what happens to more of coming to terms with some things and growing as you know, when life, realizing life will never be the same. If you have not read this book, please go pick it up. The audio is phenomenal. I am not an audiobook listener. This is, again, my first book I ever read from an audio, and I just absolutely thought it was beautifully done. And I don't want to give you too much because I feel like going into this book not knowing much is the way to go because that way you can have that surprise like I did and just be shell-shocked. And but yeah, pick it up. It's a YA contemporary. It's a heavy-hitting book. Phenomenal. Please, please, please go read this book. All right. Book number two is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I loved this book. I still think about this book, which to me is the writing of a phenomenal book. My first Riley Sager book I have ever read. If you're not familiar with this book, I feel like I've talked about it a lot on my channel. It's told from a girl's perspective or like a young woman, I guess I should say. And she is... Um, has inherited the house that she lived in for like 20 something days when she was a child but they had to mysteriously and get up quickly and leave because they believed that it was haunted um so it goes from her perspective of trying to really investigate if the house was really haunted or not she's not entirely sure but we also have snippets from her dad who had wrote a book about what happened at this house called the house of horrors was the book title so we're we're getting what happened through the dad's perspective through the house of horrors and we're also getting it through the daughter's perspective after her father had passed away of trying to figure out if really what happened in that house was paranormal or if it was not. And you really, as a reader, do not know until towards the very end. And the end, I definitely was surprised and shocked by how it ended, which is always nice because I feel like once you read a lot of thrillers, you pick up on a lot of clues and can kind of sense out when things are going to happen or the twists and turns. I didn't expect the things that happened in this book and I truly did not know if it was paranormal or not until the end of the book. So great book. My goal again for 2021 is to read more of his backlist books. He is coming out with a new one this year. Super excited to dive into it and hope it's as good as this one. All right. So what we've all have been waiting for, my number one book of 2020 is, I okay, knocked it down, drum roll. The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. So I feel like this book um, kind of got a lot of publicity recently because it was nominated for two categories in the Goodreads competition. Um, it was nominated for Best Horror slash Thriller Novel and as a debut novel as well. This book did not read like a debut novel. It was so good. It is a horror novel, but it's not one of those ones that like something's going to like scare you necessarily. It's more of like an unsettling type of vibe so it's about our girl our main character um her name is emmanuel and she lives in a society where there is a prophet this prophet has many many wives and everyone has to follow his rules in like this puritan society 
Um, she has been given a journal from her mother who had been pretty much ostracized by society because she had um, mingled in the woods and had a daughter that was half black and that was really deemed completely like unforgivable in the society. So she finds this journal and she wants to kind of connect with her mother. And so she goes out into the woods that are strictly forbidden. But at the same time, the prophet is trying to get her to become one of his wives. There is kind of like a budding romance, but it's not a main center of this by any means. But you can tell that this guy, an unlikely helper here, there's kind of this romance tension a little bit between them two. I know the books with Lala read this and she absolutely loved it. And she actually, I believe, voted it for the Goodreads Choice Awards. I did as well. It did not read like a debut novel. It was a, it flew by even though it is smaller words. Um, and just the author itself seems so personable. I actually, after finishing reading this book, I made a post on Twitter, which I liked it. And I was hoping that there was a sequel coming because it kind of leaves it a cliffhanger. She literally messaged like, replied right back to my tweet, which you don't really get with authors all the time. So that was really fun. And there is a sequel in the works, which yes, if that does, that will be a pre-order for me. Um, but if you like witchcraft, Puritan societies, um, if you like any, I mean, just creepy, unsettling books, I highly, highly suggest picking up The Year of the Witching. So these are my top 11 books. Like I said, it's just so hard. And there definitely were many books that I could um, throw in this mix and just be as good as all of these other ones. It's hard to narrow it down when you've read 103 books for this entire year. But if you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them. Um, what was your top, like number one or two books that you read this year? Maybe I'll add them on to my 2021 TBR. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to take this journey with me, please press the subscribe button. And if you never want to see my content, please press that notification button. Um, if you want to be my friend on any other social media platform, all of that information is down below. And stay kind loves and I'll see you next time. Bye. Show